Okay, today we're going to be starting chapter four, and in chapter four, we're going to be talking a lot about angles, and specifically about something called a unit circle. Um, that was one of the handouts that you should have picked up. Looks like this. If you didn't get one, you'll need one of those before it goes over. Um, this unit circle is actually the non-calcular portion of your exam coming up next week. This is it. So the memorization of this thing is the test. The non-calcular part. That's all that's on the non-calcular, this right here. And we'll talk about that, I think, tomorrow a little bit. Okay. So uh, first, we're going to talk a little bit about some vocabulary. Um, when we talk about angles, you need to know which part of the angle is the initial side and which one is what they call the terminal side. So the initial means the beginning and the terminal means the ending. So wherever you start your angle, that would be considered the initial, some major struggles, <laughs> and the ending part would be the terminal. For example, if I were to draw this angle right here, and you saw the way I drew it, this part of it right here would have been the initial, because that's what I drew first, and where I ended up at the very end, um, this part right here, that would have been the terminal side of that angle. So the beginning and the end. Standard position means that when you have your vertex at the origin and the initial side is on the x-axis, that's an angle that's in standard position. So oftentimes in math, we talk about simplifying so everybody can look at the same thing. Well, in angles, we want to try to do the same thing as well. So if I'm looking at a graph and I look at an angle in standard position, it would look something like the following. Here is an angle in standard position. Notice that its vertex is on the origin, and one of the sides goes along the positive x-axis. That's in standard position. Positive angles are angles where you measure them in a counterclockwise rotation, and negative angles are in a clockwise rotation. So to help you understand that, if I'm looking at a picture here for positive and negative angles, a positive angle would be measured this way, but a negative angle would be measured this way. This one might have maybe like negative 60 degrees as an example. This one might have like 130 degrees as an example. So one is um, a positive value, one's a negative value, and all the positive and the negatives are telling you is which direction did you go, counterclockwise or clockwise? Now kind of the new thing for us is we're going to measure things in what they call radians. So as I look across my room here, what I notice is there's a certain distance between the two walls, left to right, as you look at the two walls. And maybe, for example, I said that those are 30 feet apart. So feet is a measurement of the distance between the two walls. But what I could have said instead was, hey, they are 10 yards apart. And so 10 yards and 30 feet mean the same thing, but they have different labels. In math, we also have two different labels or names for angles. We are accustomed to the one called degrees. Today, we are going to start using a different one called radians. So in a circle, if I said how many degrees in a circle, you'd say 360. But if I talk about radians as the label, you would say 2 pi. So the new idea is that 2 pi means the same thing as 360 degrees. So off of this page here, what I would like you to know is that 2 pi and 360 mean the same thing. When we talk about degrees, you will always have to have the degrees symbol. If we're talking about radians, you don't have to write the word. So if you don't write the degree symbol, you are telling me you are in radians. Okay, 
As we look at a circle down here at the bottom of our page, <clears throat> you'll notice on the bottom left that they show when you're going around a circle in a counterclockwise manner, you hit 90 degrees at the y-axis, then at the x-axis, 180, and then 270, and then 360 total as you go around. But when you do it for radians, what you'll notice is you hit what they call pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, which is like 1 and a half pi, and then 2 pi going around. And all they're showing you is what it would look like if you split the circle up into four sections. So pi over 2 means 90. Pi is 180, because that's half of 360, and half of 2 pi would be 1 pi. 3 pi over 2, or 1.5 pi, is the same as 270, and 360 is 2 pi. And they're just trying to show you visually what those are. Don't forget, if you have questions as we go along, just raise your hand. I'll pause the video, and we'll keep going. Some more vocabulary. Co-terminal angles are ones that have the same initial and terminal sides. For example, if I were to draw a picture to help you see, here is an angle in red that maybe is around 60 degrees. If I look at its coterminal angle, here would be the coterminal angle, and you're like, wait a minute, that's the same stinking angle, except what they want you to understand is that maybe this one, the red one, was drawn in a counterclockwise manner, which meant it was 60 degrees. But the purple one might have been drawn clockwise, which means it would have been negative 300 degrees. And so cool terminal means they share the same initial and terminal size. And what they want you to understand is there's two ways in degrees to describe the same direction that you might be facing based on which way you spin, counterclockwise or clockwise. So as I stand in the front of the classroom, looking along the positive x-axis, I could spin 60 degrees positive, counterclockwise, or I could spin 300 degrees clockwise in the negative direction and be facing the same spot. And they want you to understand that, whichever way you go, positive versus negative. So? Does that mean we can have two answers? That means you can actually have four. Actually, there's an infinite number, and we'll get to that later. Now, in order to find these coterminal angles, you will either add or subtract off 360. So I'd like to do an example for each of these, okay? Or 2 pi, depending on if you're radians. So let's say we're looking at, for example, 135 degrees, okay? I look at 135 degrees, that means I went in the positive direction, right? So in order to go find the coterminal the other way, I would subtract off 360. So I take this 135 and I subtract off 360 degrees, and I find its coterminal angle in degrees, and that would be negative 225 degrees. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah, I want you guys to try the next one, negative 120 degrees. You have uh, 15 seconds. You should not be using a calculator. Thomas, that was recorded. <laughs> For posterity's sake. Andrew, tell me what I should do. Add 360. Degrees. Excellent, add 360. How did you know it was add and not subtract? It was already negative. So I add 360 degrees and I get a positive 240 degrees. Okay? It's that simple. Let's say I'm looking at the negative 2 pi over 3. I already have a negative angle. What should I be adding? 2 pi. Not degrees anymore. I'm not in degrees. I'm in radians. So instead, I'm going to add. And I'm going to add 2 pi. Now here's the problem. There's a fraction. And that always tends to freak people out. So with fractions, the most important thing to remember is you need to have common denominators. So as I look at this negative 2 pi over 3, I want to add that to 2 pi, but I need it to be with a denominator of 3. What's its current denominator? 1. 
So in order to change it by 3, I have to multiply the top and the bottom by 3. That means I'm going to change 2 pi into 6 pi over 3. This 6 pi over 3 is really saying the same thing as 2 pi, but I needed to say it that way so I could combine it. So when I put these two together, I get a total of 4 pi over 3. So why'd you pick 6 pi? Because I had to change the denominator to 3, so I multiplied by 3. Now, this last one over here that I didn't do yet, this 13 pi over 6, is actually interesting uh, because it, if I subtract off 2 pi, also has to have a common denominator. So as I look at its common denominator, I notice that when I do this, I get 13 pi over 6 minus, and how would I change the 2 pi into times 6? So that'd be 12 pi over 6. 13 pi over 6 is minus 12 pi over 6 is, is 1 pi over 6. <coughs> In this next part, we're going to talk about quadrants. So just a reminder about quadrants. Uh, back from our very first unit that we did in our class, we had quadrants 1, 2, 3, and 4. So as I'm up here in the front of the classroom, and I spin to a degree measure that's in between the x-axis and the y-axis, which quadrant am I looking at? 1. 1. How about between the y-axis and the negative x-axis? 2. Okay, you get the idea? All right, so I can spin both counterclockwise if I'm going positive, or I can go clockwise if I'm going negative. You with me so far? All right, let's say I'm, say I'm going to spin 400 degrees. So I spin, I spin, I turn around, I spin. Once I get to 360, I'm right here facing along the positive x axis. You with me so far? And then I go another 40 degrees. Which quadrant am I looking? One. One. So every time I spin around, in 100, or 360 degrees, one full circle, I'm back again looking at the x-axis. You follow what I'm saying? So if I could get rid of spinning arounds, then I'm good to go. So what you do is you divide whatever you see either by 360 or 2 pi to see how many times you spun around. Okay? And as I look at these quadrants, here's kind of the cool thing. The first quadrant is 25% of the material, right? Up to 25%. And then the next quadrant has another 25%, which means I'm now total 50%. And then I get to the third quadrant, I'm up to 75%. You follow what I'm saying so far? So watch. Let's say I look at this 1,016 pi over 6, and you're like, how the heck am I supposed to know which quadrant that's in? Very simple. You take that whole thing and you divide it by 2 pi. Now, when you do this in your calculator, it is extremely important to make sure you put parentheses around the numerator and the denominator. Extremely important. So I want you to divide this, and I want you to see that this is the number that you get. So give that a shot. Take a look. You should get 84.6. Okay, so as you look at your graph, here's what it means. It means that you started here on the x-axis and you spun around. And that's one out of the 84 spins. And you do this and you get to here and that's 84 times that you've gone around the circle. And then the 0.6 repeating means that you've gone 66% percent more around a circle. Which quadrant would I be in if I went 66% and 2 thirds more around the circle? Three. Quadrant 3. You'd be right here. Because this was 25% in the first quadrant, 50 in the second, 
and in between 50 and 75 is in the third. So you are in quadrant number three. I want you to try the second one, the negative 4 pi over 3. You have 60 seconds. Okay, so uh, after asking for volunteers from our class to see what quadrants they got, we got all four of them, which means at least three. some of you are not correct. It's three. It's three. So let's take a look. As I take the negative 4 pi over 3 and I divide it by 2 pi, the number I should have gotten is negative 0.6. Repeating. So try again on your calculator and see if you got negative points that's repeating to start with. Please stop discussing it now. Just listen and do. Thank you. As I look at this and what it means, that means I went negative, which means clockwise, two thirds of the way around which means I'm actually in quadrant number two. So don't forget to go clockwise, and don't forget your parentheses. Give you the answers to the next two. You don't have to do them right now, but I want you to know that if you want to try these later, they're both quadrant fours. Or both of these. So maybe later on, when you go check them out, you can just see, hey, do I really got to handle on this? If you would like to leave, feel free. Good luck. <laughs> All right. Complimentary. Andrew, you look very nice today. That's complimentary. I love your skirt. Good job. Looks nice. No. Why, thank you. What is complimentary? Thank you. What does complimentary mean in math and angles specifically? It's no. like 180 degrees. No. They work well. Or you can just read and it says, oh, it's 90 degrees. See? 90 degrees, complimentary. Um, but in radians, we have a new name for 90 degrees. It's called pi over 2. Okay? And in supplementary, it means things add up to 180. But we have a new name. It's pi. So what you need to know, back from geometry, is that complementary means two angles whose sum is 90. And supplementary is two angles whose sum is 180. So for example, if I were drawing a picture, I could have one that's 30 and one that's 60. Don't forget the degrees symbol. Or um, I could have in the supplementary one that's pi over 6 and one that's 5 pi over 6 because together they make 6 pi over 6, which means 1 pi. So as you're doing these, what they really want you to understand is that these angles add up to 90 and 180, or pi over 2 and pi. And what we're going to do now is we're going to find the complements and the supplements of the following angles. And they figured that you already know how to do degrees. So we're going to look at radians. Let's look at the one on the right. And we'll just deal with that first. As we look at the one on the right, and I'm going to use the same colors to work with these, let's say that I'm going to find the complement first. If I find the complement, knowing that I, they have to add up to 90, or in our new names, pi over 2, what if I told you that I had an angle that was 20 degrees? What would its complement be? Holy crap. <laughs> the answer is 70 degrees. degrees. Yeah. Savelle, how did I get that number? I subtracted from 90. So the key here is you subtract from 90 in degrees, but since we're in radians, we're not going to subtract from degrees. We're going to subtract from pi over 2. So what's happening here is for the complement, I'm taking pi over 2, and I'm subtracting off 1 pi over 8. Can I do this? No, because they don't have 
common denominator. So I'm going to get a common denominator. The common denominator is 8. So that's 4 over 8, which is the same as a half, minus 1 over 8, which gives me 3 pi over 8. So the only thing that you need to understand here, really, is that the new thing that you're subtracting from is pi over 2, which you are then going to change into 4 eighths because you want the common denominator of 8. So we're combining a new concept of radians with our old concept of common denominator. If I were to do this for supplementary, instead of subtracting from pi over 2, I would subtract from pi. So I go, hey, I want pi minus pi over 8. Or they write down 1 pi over 8. I don't really care if you do that. But pi is not in fraction format. If I was going to rewrite that, I would write down 8 pi over 8 minus 1 pi over 8. Or in other words, my supplement would be 7 pi over 8. And so the main idea here is that you are going to, number one, use radians, and number two, get a common denominator. Questions? Now, as I look at the supplement for this next one, again, I'm going to go pi minus, and whatever they give me, 4 pi over 5. That's like saying 5 pi over 5 minus 4 pi over 5, which just gives me pi over 5 or 1 pi over 5, whichever way I want to do it. Yeah, Sally. Um, so, why is it? Common denominator. Okay. 5 divided by 5 is 1. So I have to have a common denominator, otherwise I can't subtract. All right. uh, if you like to imagine, you can think of a pizza cut up into five pieces. You took one of them away. How many are left? You took four of them away. How many are left? That yeah, kind of pizza. thing. Yeah, pizza. Yay, pizza. In the complement, on the other hand, remember these were the supplements down below here. Supplement. These were the supplements. In the complement for this one, when you try to do the same kind of idea that we did in the one on the far right, and you go pi over 2 minus 4 pi over 5, here the common denominator is 10. So to make it 10, I multiply the first fraction stuff by 5s, the second one by 2s, and I get this. I get 5 pi over 10 minus 8 pi over 10, and that gives me negative 3 pi over 10. Now this is a problem because when you're putting two angles together, you're not going to have a negative angle and a positive angle be complements or supplements. So this means there is no complement to that angle. The reason that there's no complement to that angle is because 4 pi over 5 is already more than 90 degrees. So if you have to have two angles that add up to 90 and your angle is already more than that, you can't have a complement. So if I say, hey, what's the complement of 93 degrees? You don't tell me it's negative 3 degrees. You say you don't have one. So in degrees, minutes, and seconds, we all know that there are 60 seconds uh, in a minute. But there are also 60 minutes in a degree. So this is all about conversion back and forth. Like, hey, I have two feet. How many inches is that? 24. You got that because you multiply by 12. So degrees, minutes, and seconds works the same way. It's the number's 60. So in order to go back and forth between degrees, minutes, and seconds, you're either going to be multiplying or dividing by 60. For example, as we look at this first problem, I want to change to degrees. And here I see that I have this little 12 with the slash next to it, which means I have minutes. In order to get rid of the minutes, what I do is I divide by 60. So when you're going 2 degrees, divide by 60. What do you divide by 60? The only thing that you divide by 60 are the minutes. So I take that 12, and I divide it by 60, and I get a number. What's my decimal? 0.2. So my answer to this question is, 25.2 degrees. So I can say either 
25 degrees, 12 minutes, or I could say 25.2 degrees. Some people like it one way, some like it the other. In the next one, as I look at this one, I notice that I have 30 minutes. So I take that 30 and I divide it by 60 and I get 0.5. So my answer is negative 128.5 degrees. So in converting 2 degrees, you're dividing by 60. It's a rule you'll have to remember. On the other hand, when you're converting to degrees and minutes, you're going to take whatever you see, that's the decimal, and instead of <coughs> dividing by 60, you're going to multiply by 60. So I take the point 6 and I multiply it by 60, because that was the rule when I'm going to minutes, and I get 36. And so I have 12 degrees, 36 minutes. So 2 degrees, divide by 60. Minutes, multiply by 60. I would like you to try the one on the bottom right. I will give you 2 minutes. All right, looks like most people are done. So as I look at this 0.18 degrees, let's see. This is the number that I'll be multiplying, the 0.18. And I multiply that by 60. And when I do that, I get 10.8. So this would mean 10.8 minutes. But that's not acceptable. I have a decimal. So I have to go one step farther, and I need to take that 0.8 that's in minutes, and guess what I'm going to do with that? I'm going to multiply by 60 again. So 0.8 times 60 is 48. And so now in the end, what you end up with is you end up with negative 184 degrees, 10 minutes, and 48 seconds. So you're never allowed to have a decimal when you're converting into minutes, degrees, seconds. But you can if you just want to be in degrees. Okay, so that's important. If you end up with another decimal, go farther. The rest of our material goes a little bit faster. <clears throat> um, on this next page, I told you at the very beginning of our lesson that 2 pi is just another name for 360 degrees, but it's in radians. So there's a way to convert back and forth. They like to use pi and 180, but since I told you that 360 degrees is the same as 2 pi, I do things a little bit differently. So for me, when I'm going 2 radians, I use 2 pi over 360. And when I'm going 2 degrees, I use 360 over 2 pi. Don't forget your parentheses around the 2 pi. Now, here's the thing. It doesn't matter which one you use. They mean exactly the same thing. 50 cents, 2 quarters, 5 dimes, it all is the same stuff. Okay? So you can use whichever. The thing I like to remember that helps me remember which one to do, whatever you're going to is on the top. So if I want to go to radians, the radians is on the top. If I want to go to degrees, degrees is on the top. So whatever you're going to go to, put that one on the top. Down below here, what does this mean? This means if I look at 135 and I want to go to radians, I'm going to take this 135 and I'm going to multiply by 2 pi over 360. Now, when you're going two radians, my recommendation to you is to ignore the pi for right now, put it off to the side, and just work with the numbers. 
So we'll take 135 times 2 divided by 360, and you'll find out that you end up with 3 fourths. And you're not going to want to use decimals, because when you do this unit circle stuff, it's all in fractions. So you need to become comfortable with that. 135 times 2 is 270. 270 divided by 360, the zeros cancel out. You got 27 over 36. 9 goes into both of them, 3 and 4. That's how I got 3 4 spot. Exactly. Would you like to see what I'm talking about? Yes. Okay. All right, next, I want you to try the negative 100 degrees. Ready, set, go. Feel free to use your calculator and see how fast you are. I got negative five ninths by. Me too. In the next group, we're going to actually convert to degrees instead. So this is just the reverse of what we were just doing. So instead of multiplying by 2 pi over 360, we're going to multiply by 360 over 2 pi because we're going 2 degrees. So I multiply by 360 divided by 2 pi. The cool thing about going to degrees is the pi's always disappear. So I notice that here there's a pi on the top, here there's a pi on the bottom. Those just disappear. So I actually end up multiplying 5 times 360 divided by 3 and 2 being multiplied together, which is 6. So when I do this, um, I end up with 300 degrees. Don't forget your degrees symbol. How do I know this? Well, 3 times 2 is 6. 360 divided by 6 is 60. 60 times 5 is 300. That's how I got mine. In the next one, just use your calculator. Okay. Yeah, okay. So times 360 over 2 pi here. Again, the pi's cancel out. Uh-oh, sorry. And it's going to be a negative number. So we know that. 3 times 2 is 6. 360 divided by 6 is 60. 60 times 2 is 120. I get negative 120 degrees. Again, you can use your calculator. I told you that on, these, on this exam, that only the unit circle is going to be on the non-calculator portion. Ignore the pies. They cancel out. The last thing you have to memorize is this formula. S equals R theta. First of all, the what? super important thing you need to know is you need to be in radians. This thing right here is an angle name. Instead of using a letter X, they use this thing. It's called theta. It's a Greek letter. So in the first problem, if I'm using that formula, it says find the length of the arc. The length of the arc is this S thing. So to find it, I go, hey, S equals, I put the radius in next, which was 40, and then I multiply by 135 degrees. Now, the interesting thing is, this 135 degrees, which is the angle measurement, is not in radians. So what do I have to do? Convert it. So I then also multiply this by 2 pi over 360. When I finish all of this fine work, I end up with 30 pi centimeters. You try it and see if you can get 30 pi centimeters. In number two, we're not finding the length anymore. But I find it helpful to write down the formula, which was S equals R theta, and then plug in things. So they want us to find the radian measure. That's this thing right here. Nope, sorry, my bad. The radian measure of the angle. That's this. I'm looking for theta. They give me the radius, and they give me 
the arc length. So I just plug those things in. As I plug them in, I have 10 equals 22 times theta. If I were putting these highlights back on, here's this one, here's this one. And the one we're looking for, of course, was the angle measurement called theta. In order to solve this problem, what I do is I just divide both sides by 22. And I find out that theta is equal to whatever 10 divided by 22 is, which I would simplify as 5 elevenths. That is the answer. Notice how it does not have a pi in it. It does not have to have a pi in order to be in radians. You just don't put a degree symbol and it means you're in radians. Not every single radian measure has a pi.